All right, hi guys. My name is uh, Leo. I'm the CEO and founder of Leo Lee Education. And uh, in today's uh, podcast, I have here with me Mr. Rafi. Uh, he's a very experienced accountant, and uh, he's here with us today to answer a few inquiries um, about uh, superannuations, also about the JobKeeper program that uh, many of you have heard uh, recently due to this COVID-19. Uh, but first of all, thank you for doing this, uh, Rafi. Uh, no problem, Leo. Okay, Thanks awesome. for inviting me. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, Rafi, before we jump into it, can you quickly introduce yourself to my audience and what you do and uh, what sort of services you provide? Okay. My name is Rafi Kul Hassan. Um, I'm a um, tax accountant. Um, I, can pro- I can provide GST, uh, bookkeeping, tax return, all these sort of things, all your accounting needs. We also do payroll and um, 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 superannuation as well. Awesome, awesome. Rafi, so I heard that uh, recently there has been quite um, a lot of uh, news about uh, this whole withdrawing superannuation um, for international students as well as for uh, temporary visa holders like 485 yeah. or 489 or so on. Can you tell us more about that? How does it work? Okay. Um, because, um, you know, the time is very difficult now. So uh, government has decided to um, let the temporary um, visa holders and the students to access their super money. So mm-hmm. you have to remember that it's your money. It's not government grant or anything. So um, the students and the temporary residents, they can um, access their um, superannuation up to $10,000 um, mm-hmm. in this financial year. The residents can claim... Um, another $10,000 in next financial year. But we'll be talking about the um, temporary residence and the student, about the student visa holders today. So, so first we'll be talking about the student holders. To access this super, um, a person should be on a student visa for at least 12 months. And mm-hmm. um, um, they have to be, uh, they have to prove that um, their income is significantly reduced and um, they cannot afford their living cost now. So um, they won't be asking for any proof at the moment, but um, they should keep their paperwork handy so that if later on, they, if they ask for any mm. paperwork or documents to support their claim, um, they'll be able to provide that. And another thing is the temporary residence, like the tier holders. Mm. Um, and some employees who are in um, sponsor visa. So um, to claim their uh, superannuation, um, the sponsor visas like the 457 or um, similar visas like this, they need to um, prove that um, they are still employed with their employer and their working hour has been reduced to zero hours. Okay, then they'll be able to access this. Other temporary holders, um, though, besides students and um, sponsored business sponsored visas, they will be able to access the um, super fund if they can prove that um, it is getting difficult for them to uh, bear the living cost at the moment. So mm. again, they won't be asking for any proof at the moment, but um, they say you should keep your paperwork handy so that if in future, if, if they ask, you can um, provide that. So that's about the super. The process is pretty simple. People need to go to the MyGov and open a MyGov account and yeah. lodge a claim from there. Um, also, um, withdrawing a super account is a very big decision. So uh, we recommend um, people should contact a financial advisor before doing that because um, there's a long um, um, consequences if they withdraw the money now. A um, couple of them are like um, if their account, um, if their balance falls below $6,000, they might lose their insurance cover. And also um, in the long run, they'll be losing um, more than what they are withdrawing now. So it's better to contact a financial advisor before withdrawing, before making a decision to withdraw the um, superannuation account. Got you. So let's say, so because pretty much you, you cover a whole range of uh, visa holders just now. So mm-hmm. we talk about student visa. 
We yep. also talk about sponsorship visa holders, right? Yeah. So uh, now for student visa, because a lot of my students, they are on visa 500, which is student visa now. Mm-hmm. And uh, many of them recently, they lost their job and they were working, let's say, some work as a waiter, waitress, some working in a restaurant, some working as a cleaner and so on, and they lost their jobs. Now you say that uh, they can simply go to MyGov, Yep. Um, register an account, go to MyGov, and then uh, lodge, um, lodge a, a, a file, an application. Lodge an application over there, yeah. Over there. And you say that uh, right now they don't need any documents yet. Um, um, according to know. the ATO, at the moment, they are not asking for any proof, hmm. but um, they suggested to keep the um, record of the documents. So you say that it must be at least, a, you say 30% or, or how much is it? Um, there's no indication like how much um because it is not a government grant it's your own money so mm. if you are not the um, test is like if you are not able to um, um provide the necessities for yourself you can withdraw the money okay so uh, there's no specific percentage like you have to lose um 25 percent or 30 percent income that's mm. it's not like that because it's not a government grant it's your money okay I got you. I got you. And and same thing applies for sponsorship visa holders, right? There's no percentage reduction or anything like that. No, they, they are working hours should be reduced to zero hour. Also for sponsorship is different. For sponsorship yeah. visa, we yeah. go to zero. And they still have to be employed with the employed with um company they are working for. I got you. Yes. Indeed, indeed I have this one client, he was on four eight two visa. Mm-hmm. Which is a um, you know the new four five seven you know before yeah, it was yeah. four five seven now it's called four eight two, and he was working for a hotel in Northern Territory. Mm-hmm. And what happened is the company hasn't hasn't let him go yet. Mm-hmm. They just put him on leave. Yeah. Right. So what that means is um, his 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 wages just dropped to zero percent now, right? Because okay. he, he just stopped working for now. Yeah. But, but he's still being employed, but yeah. it's just he'll, he's not working. Yeah, he'll be able. So to he's the guy that who can claim yeah. right. He can claim yeah. some. Yeah. Oh, got you. Nice. And then uh, a lot of them are on 485 visa and uh, uh, 489. So you say they also can claim, isn't it? Uh, they also yep. can get access yep. to the super. Yeah. Also, um, the people who are on 485 visa, um, they will be able to um, access the super fund um, if um, they are having difficulty to um, bear all these expenses at the moment. Mm-hmm. I got you. Which brings me very nicely to the next question, which is about the JobKeeper um, grant. Can you tell me more about how that works and what does that mean for the students? Um, JobKeeper is a huge program. Okay. So um, to discuss it um, in um, I mean, properly, we need another podcast for that, but I'll give you a basic idea about mm-hmm. that. So JobKeeper is a government grant, okay? So that's $1,500 fortnightly per eligible employee, mm-hmm. okay? So um, uh, businesses need to register for that. So um, there are some tests, like who are eligible and who are not. Um, mm-hmm. So especially for the students, if they are working... Um, or at least if they are working full-time or part-time, then they are eligible to get this one um, from uh, if their business is registered for this program. Um, students who are working on um, casual basis, they need to be employed um, at least 12 months. Then they'll be, then the business will be able to claim for them as well. Gotcha. Um, if a student works in um, one or to more than one businesses, um, they can claim only from one. So they have to nominate which businesses they want it from um, the grant from. Um, Basically, this is it. And also for the um, sole traders, like um, if anyone is doing um, sole trade business, like cleaning business, Mm -hmm. okay, Mm -hmm. and uh, might be taxi drivers or Uber Uber drivers, Mm -hmm. um, they will be able to claim this as well. Um, if their business is running uh, for at least 12 months and um, their income has been um, reduced by at least 25%, then they'll be able to apply for this one. Um, they'll, this process is not that straightforward like those accessing super um, innovation. Uh, like mm. they'll, 
once you register this they will call you and they will um, assess everything and um, on that basis they will decide you if you are eligible or not um, but um, I'll suggest like if anyone um, has the opportunity then they should um, at least um, explore the options they have in this case because um, um, people need um, as much help as they can at this moment because the situation is not good at, at the moment. Of course. And, 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 that, and what you're also saying is that so the employer, they have mm -hmm. to apply for this uh, JobKeeper first, Yeah, right? the business, mm -hmm. business has to be registered for this program first. Mm -hmm. and, and let's say if they got the grants, if they, if they got accepted and mm -hmm. if they got the money, um, how much can they pay for the, you say 1500 right? For two 1500 weeks. fortnightly. Fortnightly. And, and does it cover, does it cover two, three months before that? Or the, what's, um, what duration it covers? Um, it's, uh, it will cover from, uh, from March 30, 30th of March um, to uh, next six months. Oh, and, wow. Wow. and it will be, and it will be assessed on monthly basis. So um, they have to, businesses have to show their um, activity, submit their activity every month. And um, they have to keep a one touch payroll system um, to show the ATO that they have passed that money to the um, um, or workers in their, in their business. Mm. But, what, what if, but what if within this next one month, the business has been uh, doing very, very well. So they pick up the pace and they do well. Is it, does it mean that the government gonna withdraw the grants from? Um, it's not clear yet. Um, they, they basically want you to submit the um, um, activity every month um, to ensure that you are passing the money to the um, your um, workers. So um, regarding that, like um, because this hasn't started yet, so um, we actually do not know um, what they're gonna do. But I think um, the business who are struggling now, they are not gonna uh, they are not gonna come out of this pretty soon. That's why government is doing this for next six months. So the business who are already struggling, um, closing down their business, um, people are losing job. Government don't want that. That's why they are doing this. Mm. Keep the people um, in the employment. I got you. I got you. Uh, which is uh, which is very. Like, I think that is a very good news in many ways because that shows that the government is giving support yeah. to the business. And what that means is that uh, people who are currently losing jobs or maybe who have less hours, they might be able to get more very soon. They might be be able to get the jobs back very soon, isn't it? With yeah. What you just yeah. Said. Yeah. Because because a lot of people are worried that this situation will last for a long time and the employee won't be able to work. But from what you just said, it sounds like based on this government grant, the employer will use it to bring back their employees who has lost their job. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yeah. So okay. that businesses don't have to worry about paying their their workers. Got you, got you. How, how about this money? Can it use to hire new people as well? Or must it be used for, no, for is this um, employee? People who are already working in that business for at least one year are eligible. Oh, man, oh wow. At least one year, minimum one year. Okay. Uh, one last question, uh, Ravi. Can you tell us what you can do for my, my clients, my students? Because most of them, I have people who are uh, on student visa. I have people mm -hmm. who are on 485. Mm -hmm. uh, people who's on 491 or 489, right? I mm -hmm. even have people who are uh, small business owners. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them are actually small business owners. Uh, mm -hmm. So what do you think you can do for them? And, and, and yeah, tell me, tell me. Um, basically, I'm an accountant. So any accounting needs, if they contact me, I'll be able to help them. And <laughs> uh, especially um, if they have, a, um, they have to lodge a bus, bus GST, uh, mm -hmm. their tax return. Um, we also do the bookkeeping service and um, we do the payroll. So um, any accounting needs, they can contact me. Got you, got you. All right, guys, so um, how should they best contact you? Should they call you, email you? Do, do you have any, can you share with them their contact details so they can? Yep, they can call me on my mobile. This is 402 Again, my name is Rafikul Hassan and um, um, my email address 
rafikul underscore hassan at outlook.com. That's R A F I Q U L underscore H A S A N at outlook.com. Awesome, awesome. So, guys, I'm also going to put his contacts in the description of this video so you guys can call him, ask him questions. He's a very good man. He, he knows his, what he's doing. And I'm very confident that yeah, you will benefit from using his service. But again, thanks for the information today, Rafi. No and problem. I and thanks for inviting to, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We look forward to, to um, seeing you helping more people and, uh, yeah, working with you. All right. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Leo. Thank you. Bye.